Hi, I'm John of John's Carnivorous Plants, and this is my indoor nursery. Today, I'm going to teach you how to grow Drosera lanata, a Pedialaris sundew native to Northern Australia. In this grow guide, you'll learn everything you need to know on how to grow one in your own home. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy this kind of content. Also check out my monthly tour videos. There's a link in the description to all my social media and to my own nursery where you can buy one of these off of me directly if you live in the United States. Thank you so much and I hope you enjoy the content. The first and most important point to cultivating any carnivorous plant is climate. You need to provide a stable climate for long-term success. This includes temperature, humidity, and airflow. To maintain a stable climate of 40 to 80% humidity, 60 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and steady airflow, I suggest the following. Use a humidifier near your grow area to maintain humidity. Bags, clear plastic cups, and humidity domes work, but these options are a poor replacement for ambient humidity. Bags and plastic cups in particular can amplify the sun and roast plants with high sun exposure if grown on a windowsill. Use a space heater or air conditioner to keep your temperature between 65 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Going too far out of this temperature range can cause stress to the immune systems of the plants and lead to more fungal and pest infections. To measure your grow area's climate, I highly recommend purchasing a thermometer or humidity gauge like this one. There's a link in the description to buy one from Amazon. The next important point to cultivating carnivorous plants is lighting. The sun is the best light you can have for your plants. Since most homes do not have windowsills that provide enough light, indoor growers are left to using indoor LED grow lights. Here you can see that I use an array of different fixtures. No matter what kind of lights you use, make sure to drape the cords before going to your outlet to prevent water-related electrical fires. An appropriately rated timer for your lights is critical to the long-term health of your plants. As a quick overview, lighting sources should be 4-6 to six inches away from most species of carnivorous plants. I recommend Yescom 225 lights as they cost around $30 off Amazon and work great for smaller collections. You can use 4-foot LED shop lights from most big box stores as well. I have a link in the description to the red-blue Sunco lights that I use for some of my racks. Make sure that you provide at least 12 hours of direct light to your plants a day. Going under this amount can stress certain tropical plants. Like climate shifts, this can lead to decreased immune function. Even plants like to sleep, and some like Biblis only digest prey at night. As a safety tip, make sure you drape your cords and have a low spot to prevent water-related electrical fires. If you are growing your plants outside or on a window, use the species-specific lighting preference later in this video as a guide to how much exposure the plant should receive. Next up, soil. Most carnivorous plants occur in nutrient-poor soils. I grow all of mine in either a mix of peat and perlite or straight long fiber sphagnum moss. Always make sure your medium is thoroughly wet and mixed, if the medium is dry, the plants will die. Never use any medium with fertilizers. The nutrients will burn most carnivorous plant species roots. Always make sure you rinse your peat and perlite before use. And lastly, if you do not want to make your own mix, I sell pre-made carnivorous plant medium packs on my website. There's a link in the description. One of the most common questions I see is how do I mix my medium? First I use peat. Then I add perlite. I use a hoe and mix it all thoroughly together. I then take my pots, fill it thoroughly to the top, and give it a slight pat down. Always make sure to thoroughly top water your pots. And as you can see here in this last scene, there's the difference between wet and dry peat. Next up, water. First thing you need is a TDS meter like this. It'll measure the total dissolved solids in your water. You need water with under 100 parts per million of total dissolved solids for carnivorous plants. Here you can see my tap water comes in at around 100 parts per million. Next my reverse osmosis filtered water clocks in at 12 parts per million. To water I use the tray method, watering from the bottom of the pot. I fill these trays 1 to 2 inches up the pot and refill the trays once the tray is dry, but before the medium dries. For a quick overview, make sure to have a TDS meter and only use water under 100 parts per million of total dissolved solids. Tap water is usually unusable, so make sure to test it before use. Distilled water from a grocery store, pharmacy, or other store will work. Nursery water will also work. 
Water from an air conditioner or dehumidifier can be used, but is not recommended for the long term. Use the tray method of watering. Make sure the water is at least one inch from the bottom of the pot. If the soil dries, the plant dies. Top water all plants except pinguicula and some small rosetta drosera every two months to prevent mineral buildup, promote oxygen exchange, and prevent most fungal growth. Lastly, to fertilize or feed carnivorous plants, I use Maxi 161616 fertilizer and apply it as a foliar feed. You can mix a small amount with water and use an eyedropper or pipette, but I prefer to use a missing bottle. I'll take small amounts on a plant tag and shake vigorously to mix. To be accurate, the mixture clocks in around 100 parts per million. I mist the plant's foliage thoroughly for about 30 minutes before lights go off every two weeks. Make sure to spray at an angle perpendicular to the pot to prevent excess fertilizer. This can cause algae growth that can be easily scraped away. Utricularia can be fed by spraying the topsoil, but back off if you see algae mats forming. Drosera lanata is a member of the order Caryophyllales family Drosseraceae, genus Drossera, subgenus Lassocephala, and is native to northern Australia. I find the species to be a particularly easy pediolaria sundew to grow, and it's quite vigorous. Likes humidity around 70%, temperatures uh, around 75 to 85 degrees, and 14 hours of on lighting time. Overall, Lonata is definitely one of the easiest pedialaris sundews to grow and I highly suggest it if it's going to be your first just like Drosera pedialaris. They are super easy to grow and super beautiful. <laughs>